All right, guys, in about a week's time, the Professional Windsurfing Association is going to be back with the first event in 18 months at Israel at the PWA Tiberias World Cup. And I don't know about you, but I'm super excited about this because I used to watch all the events in the last years. And even if it is the Asian legs and you have the time difference, so they are streaming at night, I still stayed up like all night just to watch the events unfold. And yeah, now after an 18 month break, I'm so excited to get back to watching the PWA and watch racing at the highest level because it's just so exciting to watch and to see who ends up on top. Oh, Bo is going to go around the outside. Jive Mark, and he's hit a massive bit of swell there as he comes into the outside. Jive Mark, it doesn't seem to have affected him and Al, uh, Mateo, but Mateo's going to close in on him now. How's the swell Ooh. lining up? It's not. He's on the same swell. Uh, Mateo Yakino is on the oh. same swell. But that is the big oh difference. Mateo Yakino on wow. the same swell. It's going to be neck and neck. And Mateo Yakino has the upside line. Al Bo and Mateo Yakino going head to head down wow. this last reach. This this is probably the epic racing we have wow. ever seen on the PWA. Look at it. Who would call this? Matteo Yakino, Antoine oh, Alfredo. Oh, no. So, for today, what I want to do is make a top 10 prediction video for the World Cup at Tiberias, Israel. But first up, before we get into the actual top 10 prediction, we have to talk about one big change that happened to slalom racing last year, which might affect the rankings hugely this year. And that is the integration of foil windsurfing into the slalom discipline. So before in 2019, when the last events unfolded, there were separate rankings. At events, there was a slalom discipline, which was purely on fin. And then at some events, there was a racing discipline, which was course racing on foil. Now these two disciplines in the PWA are integrated. So instead of having both foil racing and slalom racing, it is now only slalom racing but with the difference that you don't take only a fin for slalom racing, but that if you choose, you can also take a foil. And that's really the big part. If you choose, there are no rules for this year. You don't have to take a fin or have to take a foil in certain conditions. The decision is up to the riders. And I think this is going to make for a super exciting year this year in PWA slalom racing. Because obviously before, if you wanted to be good in slalom, you only needed to train on fin and you could skip the whole fall discipline entirely. Now that's no longer possible. If you only do fin racing, in certain conditions you might not be competitive. So now you have to be a good fin racer and also a good foil racer to be competitive in the PWA slalom discipline. And I think this fact might mix up the rankings a lot this year. Obviously the change happened last year in the pandemic and as a result of the pandemic, there were no events. So we didn't see this change unfold and see how it affected the rankings. But this year we are going to, and that's why I'm so excited to see the PWA World Cup racing back in action. And as I've said, there are certain conditions that suit foil racing more. And I think these conditions will be when the wind is a little bit gusty and the sea state is not super flat, because in these conditions, the foil will just outperform the fin as the fin will slow down a lot if you hit a lull or if you don't have any wind at the at the jibe mark and i think in conditions like these the foil is way superior obviously the other way around if you have very stable wind and if the water state is kind of flat you can easily go like 32 33 knots on slalom fin gear even on big gear like 7 8 8 6 and i think in these conditions it might outperform the foil but now with the development of the slalom foils we see the foils are pushing higher and higher speeds as well so guys are going 32, 33, 34 knots even on the slalom foils. So it's going to be really interesting to see where the change will be, like where riders choose to no longer be on the foil, but on the fin. And I think this wind limit will be pushed up and up and up the next years, the more the foils develop, obviously. Because if we're honest, fin racing has been around for a long time now, and the improvements from year to year are getting smaller and smaller, whereas the foil slalom discipline is still in the beginning. So we might see a lot more improvements there than we see in the fin racing. So as for now, I think the point where foil and fin are more or less equal is the point in slalom racing when riders would switch down from an 8.6 down to a 7.8. 
I think that's the point where both fin and slalom are equally competitive. And I think if it's getting windier so that you're like full power 7-8, I think the fin will be superior. But if you're kind of struggling to go on 8-6 or even struggling to go on 7-8, the foil might definitely have an advantage. But now let's get into the actual fun stuff, the top 10 prediction. And if any of the riders are seeing this and if they're excluded or included where they don't like, obviously this is just a fun video from my perspective. I'm not an expert. I'm just a fan of watching the PWA World Cup. So here we go. So in the number 10 spot, I'm going to put Ethan Vestera. He's a young, very fast guy from Aruba. So I think back in 2017, he had a serious injury in Fuerteventura, which might have been career ending for him. But he recovered really well from that. And in 2019, I think he finished the whole season in 13th position. And I think he's going to be really eager to crack that top 10 this year. So my prediction is that he's going to finish 10th at this year's Tiberias World Cup in Israel. Moving on, in 8th position, I put Ross Williams. And a lot of you might actually be surprised that I put him that low because he's a guy that's been like in the top 5 or 6 for years and years and years now. And he's really consistent. But in my opinion, I think there are so many up-and-coming riders who are so eager to get onto the high-placing spots that in the end I just finished up putting him in ninth position, but we will see how the event is going for him. And of course he might end up a lot higher than I predicted here. I think his biggest strength is going to be his consistency. And I think that's going to help him a lot with the placings, but we will see what happens. In number eight we're going to have Arnon Dagan. He's a guy who is from Israel and he's recently put out an interview on the PWA website where he said he's tried to get the World Cup to Israel for over 20 years now and I think he's going to be super motivated to race in his home country at an event that he's tried to make happen for 20 years. So my prediction is going to be that he's going to end up in the 8th spot just because he's going to be extra motivated to get a high placing at this event in his home country. There are some symbols from people that are going to get out. There's the owl of the Italians, they call it Gufo. And me, I have the eye of the Jew, I call it. I eye the wind and hope that it doesn't come. <laughs> For the number seven spot, we have my fanatic duotone teammate, Marco Lang. And I think he's a guy a little bit similar to Ethan Vestera. He's been sick for a lot of 2018 and he came back strong in 2019. And I think he's really fast on straight line and he's going to have the skills to crack the top 10 at this year's Tiberias World Cup. So in sixth position, I'm going to put Jordi Vonk for this prediction video. He's been a guy who has been progressing a lot over the last few years and each year his rankings have gone up and up and up. And I think he's also very complete in that he can foil and windsurf on Finn very well in both disciplines. And I think this is going to pay off this year and he's going to end up in sixth. I think he might even be a guy who's, who might be able to crack the top three, top four by the end of the year. But for this video, I have him in sixth spot. Okay, guys, before we move on into the top five spots, just a quick reminder. If you like this windsurfing action and windsurfing content, go check out the channel. I have a lot of videos like these and I have tutorials and vlogs and like progression videos of my own windsurfing progression, so to say. So if you like this kind of content, I would be super happy if you decided to subscribe to the channel and help me grow this channel and make it into something much bigger. Anyway, let's get back into the top five, because in number five spot, we're going to have Sebastian Kördel, a fellow German slalom racer. And actually, I've trained a lot with him and been on the water with him in Tarifa. He was also there to train. And I think he's going to be doing super well this year. And the reason for that is that I think he's, he's a really, really good foil racer. And Obviously, last year or in 2019, he ended up as vice world champion in the foiling discipline. So obviously, he's a very good foil racer and he's proven that he's also very good in slalom racing. So I think the change of moving from pure fin slalom racing to fin and foil slalom racing is going to suit him a lot. And I think he's going to be doing super well. And also, he switched sponsors recently. He's no longer on GA sales, but now he's on Severn sales. And I think that change is going to suit him. I think the sales from Severna are also really good. 
and maybe a little bit better than the GA sales in my opinion. So I think this change is going to suit him and give him a boost this year in the placings. Moving on to the unlucky spot number four just outside the podium places, I will put, and you might disagree with this, but I will put Antoine Albo. Yeah, I'm going to put him outside the top three. Why? Well, besides being the sailor with the, mo the most World Cups currently still sailing, he's also one of the oldest guys on tour now in the slalom discipline. I don't know, I think he's like 46 or 47 years old. I hope I'm correct with that. And he's competing with guys that are 20 years younger than him. And I think before he had the advantage, and he still has the advantage, of having this huge knowledge about slalom racing and looking, looking back at so many world championships and so many races, he just has that competitive edge and also the mindset, which is really important in slalom racing. I think mentally he's very, very strong. Like a bad result is not going to throw him off. He's just going to come back stronger. And that's, I think, the big advantage he has, like all that knowledge and obviously he's super fast. But I'm not putting him in the top three this year because there's another guy cracking the top three. Like the last few years, it's been this big three consisting of Antoine Albo, Matteo Iacchino and Pierre Mortefon, who are just so consistent, which is really their advantage. Like they never finish outside of the top five, more or less. And that's why they're always up there. But for this year, I'm predicting another guy to crack the top three. And also, let's get back to the change from fin racing to fin and foil racing. I think he's really, really good on foil, Antoine Albo. But I think he might have a problem if they do like super light, because obviously he's not the lightest guy. So I think this change might end up in racing and six to seven knots on foil. And I think if they do that on the tour this year, this might be an area where Antoine Albo might struggle. Okay, on to the medal places. And for the bronze medal, I have Maciek Rutkowski from Poland. And he's been a guy that's won his first races in 2018, 2019, and who's improved a lot over these last few years, in 2018 and 2019 especially. And I think the biggest change he's made is he's improved his mental state in racing. And I think he will be able to crack the top three this year. And same like a lot of other guys on this list, he's a very complete sailor, both in foil and slalom racing. And I think the switch is also going to suit him a lot. And I think he's going to put everything together. Try not to think about it too much. He's built up his physique over the last few years. I think he has the mental ability now to crack the top three. And he has the speed and the jibes, so I think he's going to end up in third position at this year's Tiberias World Cup. So for the top two, you can probably figure it out by now who the top two are going to be, as you haven't heard the names now. And in number two spot, I have Pierre Mortefon. Obviously, he's the last PWA Slalom World Champion. And now we're going to have the switch. I think at the beginning of integrating the foil racing, he has been a little bit slow to adapt it, but I think by now, He's caught up and he's up there at the very top of the foiling game as well. So I think he's going to be doing super well as well here in Tiberias and be in the top three again. So for now, I'm placing him in second position. And number one is going to be, of course, who else but Matteo Iacchino. I think he's been a guy who's been training so hard and so much, especially last year when COVID hit. I don't think, I don't think he's taken much time off. He's just been training and training and training. I think he really wants that second world championship title. And I think also the foiling will suit him a lot. He's been winning in Sylt, I think, a couple of races. So I think he's going to be also be doing super well in both Finn and foil racing. And he's going to win this year's Tiberias World Cup. Yeah, that's it, guys. That's my prediction. Obviously, I'm going to follow it up when the, once the event has started and see how it's turning out. For now, leave your own predictions for this year's PWA. Tiberias World Cup down below in the comments and let me know who you think is going to win or place highly and why or why not. It will be super interesting to read your opinions on this. And for now, see you in the next video. I hope the wind is going to be coming back here because there's been nothing, really nothing, not even for foiling. It's just like, I don't know, it sucks. Anyway, see you in the next one. Bye guys.